Beyond the Tablecloth, we've got you covered. I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Episode 376, Thanksgiving Table Ideas. We are getting ready for the holidays. It's such an exciting time of the year, but it can be a stressful time of the year. So we want to help take any of the stress off your plate, so to speak, (laughs) and um, give you some great ideas or, you know, just ignite your um, creative juices and get you thinking you know, how you can use the things that you already have in your house, or maybe just a few things that you need to add here and there. And, you know, it doesn't have to be an elaborate table for 12. If it's you and your significant other, or it's you and, you know, one of your grown kids, or if it's you and your new baby, whatever, or whatever, whoever makes up your Thanksgiving table, it should be special and beautiful. Yeah. And I think that, that I so agree with you. It, It, celebrations are not just for other people. They're for you. So even if it's just, if you're not, even if you're not having any guests over, I'm applauding. I think, That's a good make thing it to beautiful. remember. Make yeah. it beautiful for, for you and for your family. And my starting point, I like to start with choosing the dishes. So if you just have one set of dishes, this part is easy. You've chosen. <laughs> right? You've already decided uh, what you're going to use. But if you have more than one set and You know, this is a nice thing too, if you're buying dishes, is to have a couple of different sets that kind of mix and match with each other that can go for different holidays. And I think that uh, will serve you well, uh, especially if you don't- Another really good pun to slift out. Oh. (laughs) You're so slick. Mm -hmm. But it's going to work well because, you know, a lot of times, if you have a large group, you you don't want to have- 12 or 16 of every pattern of plates. Even I, the dish crazed woman, does not want that many plates. <laughs> I used to have anymore. them. Not, not anymore because they're just too much work to keep. You know, they're just, it's, it requires so much room and it becomes stressful. So it's kind of nice to have some that mix and match. But I have some vintage ones that have some fall kind of harvesty kind of colors and flowers on them. And so I like to pull those out. And also, oh, you know what? I don't have those anymore. I had some, <laughs> no, 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 I have those. But I mean, this other these other plates, they were my mother laws but they were cream the lennox wheat pattern yeah, i yeah. used to use mm-hmm. those for for um the holidays so i don't i'm not using those this year because we don't have them anymore so if my family's at least listening they're just under the a bed somewhere <laughs> oh you have them but they're under a bed somewhere. <laughs> yes i mean i don't mean that i got rid of them anyway so i mean <laughs> first i'll start with the plates because i because you know, you want to make sure whatever you do is going to work with the plates that you have. So I, rather than starting with the, what arrangement or centerpiece you're going to have, I think you need to make sure, you know, know what plates you're going to use. Yeah. Take an inventory of what you've got. Right. Yeah. So then, I mean, obviously you're going to, then the next step I usually do is to decide on a tablecloth. And do you usually use a tablecloth or are you a placemat person? I have um, seven things that I'm going to tell you about that I would use. So, oh, okay, great. Yeah, I'm not really a tablecloth person. Okay, well, do you want to talk about your seven things? No, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, okay. Uh, so I would t- choose a tablecloth or placemats, a, a table runner. I mean, this is kind of where you want to, and again, that's going to need to go with your plates. And over the years, I've just ended up using a lot more white linen tablecloths. Mm -hmm. Uh, rather than a bunch of colorful ones, because again, that kind of keeps it a clean palette and then I can do whatever I want on top. So that's kind of where I start. And then again, this, this is getting embarrassing, but choose the flatware you're going to use. (laughs) Go to your flatware uh, butler's pantry and, and open the drawers and then decide what pattern you'll be using for Thanksgiving. Okay. So I have my flatware, I have bronzeware, which is kind of the brass colored. Yeah forks and spoons. And then I have the the black handled, which is, you know, which those are really charming. Yes. And then I have some silver, some silverware. That's mm-hmm. So I have to decide which one. So again, that kind of depends on what tablecloth I'm using and what dishes I'm using. Because for the gold rim dishes, the bronzeware goes really well with it. 
Now, when you're calling it bronzeware, it's it's gold. It's gold, right? Okay. I mean, the now stuff is I- it the real mm-hmm. the real deal? You know, is it dipped in gold or is it like the stuff I'm, I got from Target? Well, what I have was from Thailand, not Target. Same not Target. Tea. It starts with a T, but not Target. Okay. Well, I mean, my my in laws did some traveling around the world, and mm-hmm. these are one of the things they picked up from their travels. So I really don't know what it's. It looks kind of like brass, only it doesn't seem to turn. I don't know what it is. Wow. Okay. I assume it's safe to eat with. Wow. It's, but I think it looks. But it looks a lot like it's not as shiny as mm-hmm. what they have at Target. Okay. But I think what they have at Target would be a nice a nice compliment to some gold rimmed dishes if that's what you have. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of so before we get to the the centerpieces and stuff, I just kind of wanted to put that foundation. And then the napkins, I think, too, are going to go with your dishes or your tablecloth. You know, Kelly and I love linen napkins, so I try to have some sort of linen napkins. Often I just have a white linen napkin, a very simple one, but you can go with a color that goes with your dishes or it's going to go with your centerpiece or whatever. Yeah, the linen napkins that we had in Bespoke were really great. So whoever snaps up the sets of those, kudos to you. Good job. I well, didn't and, get any and of we those. Had some vintage ones. <laughs> I know, and the vintage one with the antique ones are my favorite, the ones that are monogrammed. I don't even care about what monogram is on them. I think those are beautiful to use. Oh, yeah, those were those were great. And they actually did go to a person. At least one or two of the sets went to a mm-hmm. person that had oh. those same initials, which I oh. thought was amazing. Right, wonderful. right, right. So... And then, you know, how do you want to do your your napkin? You, you can do it. Well, actually, have you seen those where they do a towel, actually, rather than a napkin? Mm-hmm. And it goes under the plate and yeah. down? Yes. The front? I That's really a beautiful look. And if you're doing that, you'd probably want a napkin in addition to that one. Because those are usually more like, sometimes they're more like uh, towel sized. Yeah. And sometimes it acts almost like a charger. So exactly. do you want to... Um, so do you want to go through, or do you have ideas, like specific ideas, how to set things up and things to add and all of that? Well, yeah, yeah, on the centerpiece, but I didn't know if you had some you Right, so like- do you want me to jump in here now yes, with my thoughts? Do. Okay, please do. Before we go into the like this next chapter. Of yes, that. yes. Okay, so anyway, I just love Thanksgiving. I just want to say kudos out to Thanksgiving because I think that Thanksgiving sometimes gets passed over. Everybody's in it. I was at the Rite Aid the other day, which is, you know, like the local kind of CVS, Walgreens kind of thing, if you have if you don't know what Rite Aid is. So I was in there, I, I don't know, picking up some prescription or something. And they had all the Christmas stuff out, you know, like, really? We haven't even had Halloween yet. So how is Thanksgiving going to survive? Because it's not really like a kid <laughs> holiday, you know, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have the the panache no of a gift giving holiday, you no, know. No, but on the other hand, it's low pressure. It doesn't no, but require that, but as much yes, work. And so but, I but enjoy yes, it for that. But, but yeah, but that. But that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, how is it going to survive in a retail environment? You know, Thanksgiving just gets washed over, and then we all get so. Well, that's the day that you start shopping now. So you've got to get paper plates out because you you don't have time to wash the dishes. You've got to go stand in line for a TV or whatever. No, no. Uh, So anyway, I just was like, everybody stop the madness and really pay attention to Thanksgiving. It's such an important holiday, and whether you believe in the pilgrims or Plymouth Rock or anything like that, believe in them. Do you not believe? believe they <laughs> well you know there are there are different stories about you know how great that whole thing was and did oh, they okay. really eat turkey and oh, all of that oh, but oh, oh. who cares right it, the point is it's you know it's it's a wonderful celebration it's a time it's, to, it's be a day to be grateful yes. and to join together with your family and what yes. i love about it is you know pretty much everybody celebrates thanksgiving you know there's there's no it's not a religious holiday everybody can celebrate thanksgiving and i just think it's a wonderful holiday so Yay, Thanksgiving. And I think that everybody should give that its moment to shine before we move on to the other holidays. So that's my little um, public service announcement for Thanksgiving. And then as far as a Thanksgiving table, well, I have three words in mind. Um, And I didn't always have these words in mind. Sometimes there were other words in mind like abundance and overladen and why not add that and let me make a handmade uh you know place card out of calligraphy and this and that and the other thing I'm I'm literally 
sliding that off all off the table, literally and figuratively, and three words, simple, elegant, and beautiful. You Ooh, do not need, I like that. Right. You do not need to go crazy. It, even if you're having, you know, 30 people at your house, and particularly if you're having 30 people at your house, like if you're having four people and you want to make a place card, well, knock yourself out because it's not going to take you more than like 18 minutes. But if you're having a whole bunch of people, even more reason to also try to keep these words or similar words in mind, simple, elegant, and beautiful. And what I would have in my storehouse for a simple, elegant, and beautiful Thanksgiving table, or you can even insert Christmas, but we're not there yet, table is a runner, chargers. I think chargers are unsung heroes of the holiday table, napkins, a centerpiece, candles, glasses, and utensils. So that's really all you need. And it doesn't have to be brand new and it doesn't have to be an heirloom. It can be, it might even be better if it's mismatched. I mean, I think that's such an interesting way to set a table. So you really only need those things. You don't need a 90 inch uh, tablecloth that's going to set you back a couple hundred bucks. Um, you know, and you, and you don't want to get the cheesy tablecloth from, you know, Rite Aid or CVS or wherever that has like, you know, various color leaves on it and things like that. Exactly what Anita's saying, you know, maybe just use a white um, runner. I don't really like tablecloths. I think that they're, it's just a lot of work. Uh, I'm not an ironer and then you have to store them. I love a runner and if somebody spills on it, somebody spills on it. So okay. I would make it even more simple with a, or simpler with a runner but in beautiful fabrics. So particularly if you're going simple, elegant, and beautiful, then quality really matters as far as whether you know, it's a linen napkin as opposed to a paper napkin or uh, one of those napkins that's in that weird material that never absorbs anything. So, Oh, the poly blends. Yeah. Well, let me can that? I go back to the tablecloth for a second for sure. if somebody wants a tablecloth? Yeah. Uh, a couple of options for you. Again, I love the white linen ones and I inherited a stack of them from my mother-in-law. But let's say you didn't, if you want a white linen tablecloth, you can buy new, but I would even suggest going to a thrift store or a consignment store because there's probably a lot of old linen tablecloths that people have gotten rid of that, that, that would be available for super cheap. That would be very nice. And I don't mind ironing. So I love a crisp, nice tablecloth. So that's one option. And the other one is our friend, the drop cloth. Oh, which yes. if you, especially if you have to cover a lot of tables and you want mm-hmm. them all to look the same and that maybe they're different sizes, maybe you have three different tables in your house that you're going to be using because you're having a big crowd. That's a great way to have the same tablecloth on all the tables. Because if you're buying something that's patterned, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to find three different sizes, you know, in the same pattern. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And the length on our friend, the drop cloth is so great because sometimes you're cobbling together some tables uh, to, you know, to add yes. the extra three people or something like that. I once did that years ago for a client. She was having her church group for uh, like a progressive dinner and we set everything up in her living room. And so she had these big, long tables and we were sticking other little tables on and we're like, how are we going to get tablecloths and mask all of this? So I ran to the hardware store and we did drop cloths and looked beautiful. It really does. So it's, it's a great option and they're they're usually 100% cotton, so they have a nice you – know, they're, they're stiff, but uh, I think they're a great look. So, yeah, those are some options. And if you want new, you can go check something out too. Oh, oh, here's another idea for a tablecloth. How about a tartan throw? I love plaids and tartans. So, I mean, this is a great time. I mean, this is the time of year where they work great on a table. So that's another thing you can put on the table. Yeah. And depending on the size of the table or size of the throw, you could do it sort of at this rakish angle or do it almost like a diamond. And I mean, it can be absolutely beautiful. Well, and right. even if or it had if you, fringes on it, I mean, that's even adds to it. Right. And let's say if it's too small to be a traditional tablecloth, that's mm-hmm. fine too. Don't worry about it. You can, you can supplement with, um, you know, placemats or, or whatever you want. Mm-hmm. So I think that's fine. So let's go back to the chargers for a second, if we can. So we've covered a lot of tablecloth. I'm more of a runner girl. Anita's is more of a tablecloth girl. Um, So a charger, which you could obviously use, whether it's a tablecloth or a runner. I have just two sets of chargers that I've had 
for forever. So one is a sort of a darker rattan from Pottery Barn. Actually, just I even keep them in the big bag. I got them from uh, Pottery Barn. I probably have, maybe I even have 12. I I definitely have eight. And it keeps, you know, you don't want them to get dusty. So I keep them in there every year and I'll pull them out. They're great all year long, but then I have these other, uh, they're, don't even tell anyone, they're plastic. Gold oh, some of those you can't really tell. You cannot tell. And I don't remember where I got those, but they've been with me for so many years. And it just, you're just seeing the little bit of the gold around the plate or a little bit of the rattan. The rattan shows a little bit more, but I think a if you don't have a set of chargers, it's it's kind of a really fun thing to invest in. And I think you will find that you use them. And it just sort of, for me, like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to take my chargers down. Like, it really feels like more of a holiday table <laughs> if I'm putting them out. And the, just like we talk about with so many things, Anita and I are always talking about, you know, sort of layering in this good way. Right. The charger just adds this base layer that, you know, again, sort of literally and figuratively, elevates your whole place setting. It's just such a pretty way to set the table. And then you put your regular plate on top of it. And then you can put a salad plate on top of it. You can put a little bowl. Maybe you don't even have another set of smaller plates or something. Put a little baby boo pumpkin in the center. Write the person's name on it. Something like that. So simple and so lovely. Excellent idea. On the charger idea, I actually have some oversized white plates that I use for chargers. So that's another thing you can do. I mean, and maybe they're considered actually platters, but they're round. And you know what? I I mean, am I wrong in saying those are called buffet plates? They're pretty, they could be, but they're very large. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of my dinner plates have about an inch. So this usually shows about an inch around. Mm Mm-hmm underneath my dinner plates. So I don't know if they're 10 or 11 inches, but they're definitely a nice large size. And they work great with, again, because they're white plates or kind of a cream colored plate, they work with all my dishes. So right. that's that's works well. And of course your rattan and your gold, the gold might not work with all dishes, but the rattan's probably going to work with most things as well too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, touching on the napkins again, we both do really advocate the linen napkin. It is just such a lovely thing to have. Um, and like linen, it's not, you know, linen clothing, it, it's really not something you have to be super, super careful. I mean, obviously you don't want someone to like smushing cranberry sauce all over it, but yeah, it's a very durable fabric and it will hold up for, and, and will hold up over a number of years. So if you think, oh, you know, investing in a set of napkins, I have to get eight, I have to get 12, you know, it, if you don't have a set, I think it might be worth something, you know, looking into now. Okay. So then um, candles, you know how I am an advocate of the Trader Joe's taper. So this will probably be the time of year they put them back out. And if mm, you're a crazy person like right. me, buy a case. I'm still working through my case from last year. They are so reasonable. If two. 49 or something like that for the the box of eight. That's just ridiculous because I see candles. Sometimes you're spending over $10 for two of them and literally you're burning your money, but it's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> well, oh, but, and back to the, the, the napkins, uh-huh. you know, if you're worried about lipstick getting on them, you know, mm-hmm. go with black linen or oh, a navy yeah. linen and then that's not going to show. And then what about napkin rings? Do you use napkin rings? You know, I don't because I had a whole bunch of napkin rings at one point and I, I don't know whether it was during the move or what have you. And I and I was like, I don't even like these and they're big and heavy and okay. I'm just not going to use them. And mm-hmm. so I got rid of all of those. I like to tie the napkins up or do something special with them. And oftentimes I'm just doing some uh, baker's twine or regular twine and I'll maybe stick a sprig of rosemary that I clipped from the garden or something in there. If it's a more casual table setting, I might even tuck the um, the silverware, the utensils inside, the napkin tied up with the sprig of oh, rosemary. That's great too. Yeah. So, but, yeah. so no, nap, not napkin mm-hmm. rings per se. Mm-hmm. Well, I have some silver ones that are, that are antique that I love. So, you know, if you have something like that, you can use a napkin ring. You certainly don't need to. You can lie it flat on your plate. You can put it to the left. And there's so many wonderful 
videos on YouTube on how to create something beautiful. It, I guess you call it napkin art. I don't know, napkin folding techniques. Mm-hmm. There's there's a one that you can do the rose in the wine glass. Mm-hmm. So, so many fun things to do. If you want to do something fun, just, just search for that online and you'll find all kinds of options. And, you know, that's a fun way to add some some interest to your table also. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. If you've got the time and you think that something like that would be fun, you know, if you're an origami master, you could convert it to napkins. But, you know, it's still, from my perspective, in the simple category, because it's you're still working within these seven things that I suggested that you should have for your table. And you're so you're taking the napkin as kind of a dual purpose. It's not only, you know, going to help people keep tidy at the table, but it's also a creative element on the table. So I think that is awesome, a dual purpose for one of those items. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co dot C-O slash DTT and use the code DTT. Now, as far as adding plates to layer or a little side plate for maybe a bread or butter or something like that and your glasses... This can be all mismatched, and I think it's so charming. So if you're if you're thinking about setting a different type of holiday table this year, or you want to add a little bit to your collection, or you're having a big crowd this year, you've got time. You know, start searching around. Whether it's online, maybe you can get two plates from you know an Etsy shop, maybe some Courier and Ives or something like that, and then you find some other plate that sort of has similar colors, but maybe it's ringed in leaves, something like this. And these can be all the little sort of salad size plate or a bread size plate. And that looks so pretty. So don't worry about going out and getting a whole new set of dishes. And as Anita saying, you know, it's something that you need, need to store. If you're buying good dishes and you're buying a whole set, it's going to be fairly expensive. This way you could get great quality 
interesting pieces and you really only have to get the number that you need. Right. And as far as glasses goes, uh, because we're talking about the glasses, I see so many glasses in the thrift stores and they're oh, super yes. cheap. If you need glasses, um, don't get with, don't go with plastic cups. There's, it's so cheap, so easy to find glasses that maybe they're crystal, maybe they're not, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, just check out your local thrift store or your consignment store and th- or, you know, a yard sale. It, people are practically giving them away and those really don't need to be matched at all. No, no. And I, there's always a whole aisle at any thrift store I ever go to that's just the clear glass. It's I mean, it's really easy to get some. I oftentimes will buy just little individual wine glasses and I'll have a collection and, you know, if one breaks, what have you. But, you know, it's a crystal glass. It's fantastic. Um, and I would suggest keeping with the simple, elegant, and beautiful, that you really limit your color palette. Um, Neutrals are great. As Anita mentioned, you know, maybe if you're going to do a tablecloth, you do white. If you're going to do a runner, maybe you do a cream or a white, something like this. And then it'll carry through. That is so easy then to transition into more of a Christmas palette. Down the line, you could use it again at Easter. You could use it every day. I, I wouldn't suggest getting something that's screaming at everyone that it's Thanksgiving. So keep it really elegant. And then another thing that you can do with chairs or benches is to get some pillows in the color palette that you're using. You can get some pillows for the chairs that kind of go with the look you have. Or even I've seen the lamb uh, skin rugs thrown over benches. And doesn't that look nice for a nice Thanksgiving table? That, That looks so good. And actually, I'm sitting here doing the podcast and I have black ones that I we bought on Amazon thrown over the chairs in the podcast studio, because, you know, you need more texture and there's a lot of hard surfaces up here. And I thought, well, wouldn't this be fun? It is delicious to sit on this. (laughs) I know. Aren't they wonderful? Yeah. And they're so inexpensive. You know, there was the Ikea one that everybody's seen. And then, and then, but I wanted um, the black. So I found these on Amazon and I just love them. I mean, I, I don't, I think the two of them were like $20 or $24. Great. Yeah. And the furry pillows are nice too for the table. Mm Mm-hmm. So those would be, you know, the Mongolian ones. They're so lovely. I think that, especially if it's a cold day, that's going to feel so warm and cozy and yeah, just look so welcoming. Yeah, that'll do a lot for your table, just to the, the whole visual impact of it. Let's talk about the candles. So again, mix and match. You know, at, at some point, you know, I might say, well, you, you never can have enough candles, but that's not true. You, you can have too many candles, uh, especially if the table is functioning, people are passing food around and whatnot. So decide whether or not you're going to do tapers or if you're going to do the little low votives. Now, if you're going to do the little low votives and the, the um, meal is going to last any period of time, or if you want them lit when the people are coming or just during the day so you can enjoy looking at your table before people mess it up and sit down and everything. <laughs> Don't you just hate that? Um, (laughs) Get a couple of boxes or sets of the candles because if you're doing the low votives, they do burn out quickly, particularly those little dinky tea lights. Like, oh, yeah. You could run through a whole pack of, you know, 20 of those if you had four little tea light votives on your table. So make sure that you've got enough of those on hand. The, The taper should. You probably wouldn't light them too far in advance of actually sitting down to the meal. So they shouldn't be a problem and would last throughout. But if you want to have the tapers, um, try to find maybe, depending on the size of your table, but if it's a normal like six-foot table, um, maybe three on each side of differing heights. That is so pretty. Well, while we're talking about candles, Mm -hmm. uh, because I used to have different colored candles, and now it's just kind of more of our simplifying life and just kind of a limited color palette sort of thing. Now I really just buy white. I think that's just the way to go. Either white or cream. You're not going to, like, don't don't do the the nutmeg colored candle. Right. The orange and all that stuff. Just I just don't do it. White is best. And then you can buy whatever kind of height, like you said, the taper or the tea lights or whatever. And the votive holders that I love to use on a Thanksgiving table are the copper ones or the silver, Mm -hmm. um, mercury mercury glass ones as well. I think those metallic ones are just so perfect for a Thanksgiving meal. Oh yeah. That's like the, um, 
Diane James, uh, the, the chalet chic that I was telling you about, the, the vase is a copper, really sort of mercury glass. So pretty. So s- similar feel there. L- let me just touch back on the candle. So if say you have t- tapers and you say, oh, I want to use more than just – because sometimes just one on either side looks lonely, mm. yes. I think. So if you add three on either side of your – either your centerpiece or whatever, if, even if you had the platter in the center of, with food on it, something like that. And if they're all the same height, so to get the differing height, which looks really pretty when the candles are lit, just in the morning, burn oh, one right. set down, you know, one on either side, and then burn another one down, but not as far. So you've got the the, the one that's full length and then one medium and then one a little bit shorter. So when the meal starts, then you've got this sort of graduated height on either side. So if you don't want to switch your ta- your actual taper holder. I think you're onto something there. And I would add to that, that depending on the height of your candlestick and what how tall your tapers are, you really don't want the candlesticks so tall that they're blocking conversation or you're looking at someone and you're having to look around a candle. Mm-hmm. So if it's too tall, that's something you could also do is pre-burn those candles down so that they're not going to be blocking anybody's view across the table. Something I just uh, re- came to my mind. I remember reading, this was years ago when I was in my, you know, Martha Stewart living fervor. I couldn't wait for that magazine to come out every week, yes. every month. Um, Martha said, don't ever just have the wicks of your candles just, you know, fresh, unburnt. Like, you know, like it looks too, yes. you know, like you should look like it's just been like going on and just been yes. casual. So mm-hmm. even if it was just every day, I, and I just do it. I've been doing it for years. Even if I just put fresh candles in and they're just going to sit on my table, I burn them a little bit. Well, and that's an old, that's an old thought on that. Is that an old Polish thought? Because I'm saying that didn't start with Martha. I mean, Mm -hmm. I've heard that since before I even heard of who Martha was, that you should, shouldn't put fresh candles on. They should already have been burnt. Yeah. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. there's something about it that, Mm -hmm. and it brings, because it looks like you actually use them, even if you don't. Right. But it just just rings true. Like it just seems Mm -hmm. nice that it's like that. Yeah. You don't want it to feel like, oh no, you, you've never used these before and you got them out for me. Now I feel bad that you went to all this trouble, you know, you're like, oh no, we used these last night. Yeah. Yeah. Just, well, we do, you know, which is great. But I mean, even if you don't, or even if it's a new set you're putting out, burn them a little bit, take Martha's tip or pre Martha, whoever came up with that idea. I think that's a really good one. You know, another thing, if you don't want candles, because Mm -hmm. maybe you've got little ones there, or maybe you're worried about them burning out or for whatever reason, you decide you don't want candles. How about those little fairy lights on the copper wires? Mm -hmm. I love using those. And you could do those kind of wrapped around some pumpkins or some leaves or something in some bowls or glasses. Uh, And that's just such a beautiful look. And it's going to would add some beautiful lighting to your table without the the candles. That is so pretty. And you can tuck the little battery pack sort of under something. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of leaves and whatnot, forage in your garden. Um, You know, you can add to your table, you can really make the, um, the, the center sort of sing by tucking in branches and leaves, you know, obviously not big pokey branches, but ones that will lie low, you know, and just, you know, do it. Don't do it the minute you wake up in the morning, but say, you know, if you're having Thanksgiving dinner in the early, late afternoon, early evening, something like that, you know, do it one of the, as one of the last tasks you do before the people come because you don't want it to all dry up. Uh, but depending on what you're clipping, it might just be fine. And just sort of tuck it in. That can really expand a um, a small arrangement or, you know, if you put one little pumpkin or even a nice size pumpkin in the center and then some candles on either side, that'll look nice. But imagine if you added some greenery and some leaves sort of strewning out from the pumpkin all around, maybe tossed a little handful of acorns around. It'll expand the whole feeling of that that very simple centerpiece, one pumpkin that maybe you took off your porch and stuck in the middle of the table. <laughs> it takes on a completely new life. Well, that's a good point. And you know, there are a couple of different ways you can go. You can just go with one centerpiece in the center and that is it. And that's kind of more of a traditional look for a table that, you know, 
I don't really see a lot these days. Or you could do kind of what you're talking about, Kelly, where rather than one centerpiece in one arrangement of flowers, you have a, an arrangement or a table, a centerpiece that actually extends the length of the table where maybe you have pumpkins or some other fruit or vegetables that's really that are really kind of strewn across the table, kind of uh, scattered in a, a way, maybe there's some different sizes of pumpkins, and then you've got maybe you've got your your tea lights, maybe you've got the candles, or maybe you've got the string lights uh, on the table. Then you've got some leaves tucked in. Uh, I love the seeded eucalyptus, but you could use olive leaves or branches from your garden, like you're saying. And I think this is so beautiful, just strolling down the center of the table. And the nice thing about doing something like that is that tends to be very low. So it's easy for guests to see over it. And also the people on the ends don't feel like they don't have something pretty to look at because there's something that goes all the way down the length of the table. So I think that's something nice to do. That is a really good point. And then if you want to sprinkle in, if you want to do something like that and you want flowers in there as well, you can simply use some very small vases or, or, you know, jars or something and just spread them, you know, throughout the the table. This is so relaxing and fun. I don't even feel stressed out about thinking about doing a holiday table. I'm actually really excited about it. I, I, as I said, I love Thanksgiving and there's something about Thanksgiving. Um, I, maybe because I grew up in New York and it was always a thanks Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and sometimes we would go see the parade and all of that. I just feel very connected to New York on that day. It's so funny. I don't really know why. Oh, really? Yeah. For uh, it's always been no matter where I've lived. So I love having that on and and preparing the meal. And now you know I have fresh new ideas from chatting with Anita about you know how I'm going to do my table, and it's probably just going to be. Uh, you know, the four of us, again, we're not, I'm, we're not having anyone come this year. So, I, you know, I can make it special for them, but I'm not going to go crazy. And I'm really going to try to stick with my three words, simple, elegant, and beautiful. Right. And then if you're, again, I think pumpkins are just such a great thing to use on your table. I mean, you can use other fruit, you can use artichokes, you can use apples, pears, figs, really kind of whatever is going to work for you. But I I like to think what, before I start, and do I want it to be neutrals? Do I want it all whites? Do I want, or do I want some other colors? So I would kind of decide what colors I want and then try to find what will work with those. So you could do orange and blue. So maybe blue dishes and orange pumpkins. You could do white and green where you have white dishes and then maybe the the white pumpkins with the green greenery down the center Black and orange is a very common fallish color combination to go with. You can go with orange and white, and so orange pumpkins and white pumpkins together. You can do brown and orange. That's a very traditional fall color combination, especially if you have those beautiful brown transferware plates. I think that would be so beautiful. Uh, so there's so many color combinations, and don't feel like you have to use traditional fall colors. I think if you have some beautiful plates that are green or whatever color and you want to use them, then I go for it. And you can always mix in white pumpkins with just about any color and it's going to look, it's going to add a feeling of fall and it'll look great. Uh, So another thing that you can do, I just have several here. I'm just going to throw them out quickly. Don't rush. Okay. Don't be stressed. I will talk very slowly. (laughs) Okay. No, not really. Okay. So uh, terracotta pots, if you're going to work with pumpkins, orange pumpkins, then terracotta pots are also a great way to bring in that warm orange uh, color to your table. So that works great. And you can put greenery in them and mix in the pumpkins of various sizes. Uh, Another thing you can do is to put a sprig of rosemary on everyone's plate, maybe tie it with twine. I love the idea of something on everybody's plate so that everybody has their own little arrangement or their own little baby boo pumpkin or their own little sprig of something. So I think that's a nice thing to do. Another thing I love to see are lanterns. Now, again, I'm concerned about the height on the table, but if you're serving a buffet and your food is actually on a table you're not sitting at, then that would be a great place to put some some uh, lanterns, some taller things, some taller arrangements, or you just put them on your on some table somewhere where they're not going to be, you know, in the way of people talking. And then I think we talked about like a footed bowl full of figs and apples and black grapes and pears and leaves. A, 
several of those down the center of a table, I think would just be magnificent. Let's see what else. A craft paper, if you don't have time for a paper tablecloth, I think the craft paper is a very viable option, if, especially if you're doing something a little more casual or you have a kid's table. I think that's, you know, a fine way to go. Uh, oh, let's... yeah, that's a nice thing to do. I like mm-hmm. that idea. And then if you wanted to do the blue and orange, you can do a blue table runner with the orange pumpkins on it. And then a lot of people have blue and white dishes. So that's that's a common color combination for dishes. And um, yeah, I think, oh, and then one one other di- idea, this is mm-hmm. one of my favorite things to do, and that is to put baby booze or those little small white pumpkins on a long baguette board. And the baguette board is the form, is the board where you proof a baguette. So if you don't have that, you could just use a long piece of wood. So it wouldn't have to be a real a bag, pr- baguette proofing board. Oh, yeah. And then you could just get a piece of wood and you could maybe even stain it a darker color yeah. or something like mm-hmm. that. That would be great. Yeah. And then, you know what? I know you've seen these and they're so beautiful. I keep wanting to do one and I haven't done that, done one yet, is to take a real pumpkin and kind of cut the top off mm-hmm. and scoop out the center, put in a vase or maybe some dirt or something, and then put in some succulents or put a bouquet of flowers in the water, or if you're doing succulents, you would put those in some dirt. But haven't you seen those? They're so beautiful. Oh, yeah. I think that's a great idea. And that would last a long time, I think. Oh, yeah. And then wheat stalks. I think those are a beautiful thing to use. But again, just be mindful of the height and where you're using those. Oh, yeah. You don't want your wheat stalks to catch on fire. No, 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 no. Nothing. Then, you'd have to definitely uh, resort to the Calm app after that if your <laughs> holiday table went on fire. And then another thing I was thinking of, uh, do you have a trifle bowl? You know, we've talked about getting rid of all the stuff you don't actually use. So you probably don't even have one. No, but I did for a while. And here I keep talking about Martha. Well, because, you know, the, the holidays make me think of her. But I, at one point I did have a gigantic trifle bowl. And I, I think only once in my life made a trifle. But it was really fun and easy to make. But, well, but I the keep bowl one, is, but you don't need a trifle bowl. You could just have any big bowl. Well, yeah, that's, that's true, glass. but it's fo- it's footed though, which is what I like about it. Right. And the trifle bowl, I keep it on hand because if I ever have a party and I'm making, I a just keep it, it on hand apart, in case. I am going to make a trifle and I'm going to throw it all in there and just act like that was the plan all along. So that's the beauty of the trifle it <laughs> is bowl. Beautiful. But but that is a great thing to use because it's glass and it's wide and it's footed to put those copper fairy lights in with pine cones or pumpkins or greenery uh, or or artichokes or whatever. And that would make a beautiful arrangement. Oh, that would be pretty because you can see it from all the sides. Yeah, that's what I You're thought. full of good ideas today. Okay, so now let's go on to our crushes then, right? Yeah. Okay, so my crush today is my friend Julie's book. <gasps> It's so beautiful, you guys. So my friend Julie, um, she blogs at Little Farmstead Living, and she's created this absolutely stunning book called Little Farmstead Living, and it's creating a country life just past the city limits. And it is all about their life in the Pacific Northwest and how they decided that they wanted a different sort of life. They weren't just going to buy the the next house wasn't going to be on a cul-de-sac in a subdivision. They wanted to really have a farmstead. And it's like, I'm still surprised, <laughs> even though I've known Julie for several years now through blogging. And Julie was part of the Sundays at Home uh, link party that I had for years, and we did that together. And I'm still surprised when I check out her beautiful Instagram and I see her sheep and her chickens and her (laughs) eggs and all that. I'm always just like, wow. I mean, she really is doing it. And she has the most adorable sons. And she and her husband are living their life. And I don't know how she gets everything done. Cause sometimes I think, how do I get everything done in my day? And then she's got to feed the sheep and take care of oh all my. these other, mm-hmm. you know, creatures. But it's, she has a beautiful home, really tastefully done. And she talks all about, you know, their decision to do this and that it's beautifully uh, photographed. And you just really, you want to dive in. Like you want to drink the Kool-Aid of having your own farmstead. <laughs> and you'll start looking for properties. 
so I highly recommend the book. You can uh, get it on Amazon and I will have the link to it in the show notes. So um, have a look. I'll be doing a blog post on it as well. And so you'll be able to see some photos and whatnot there. And it's, I have it too. It is a beautiful book. And if you love beautiful farms and talk about relaxing, what a great book to look at when you want to sit down and relax. Oh, yes. It, yeah, it so is. It's, it's it, a beautiful book. It yeah. really is stunning. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I went cover to cover a couple of times and, you know, I'm so excited for my friend. But even if I just pick this up in a bookshop, um, I would be wowed and I would be at the counter purchasing it. It is fantastic. So mm -hmm. check it out. Yeah, I'm a sucker for a beautiful farm. And it does. It looks so romantic uh, on paper. <laughs> So. Oh, yeah. And she's just absolutely, <laughs> honestly, Julie is like one of the nicest people I've met, uh, you know, during this, uh, you know, crazy blogging life and a really a lovely, lovely person. So you'll enjoy getting to know her and her family through reading her words and looking at the pictures of her home. Right. Good, good crush. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Mine's a, mine is a pre-crush. Can I do that? Sure. It sure. hasn't happened yet, but I know I'm going to be crushing on it okay. when it does. We are getting, <gasps> in Houston, what? our own Wisteria store. Whoa, of course I, you're going to be crushing on it. I know. You should be cutting the ribbon. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. the first store outside of, that they have outside of Dallas, which is where they're based. Oh. So we're very honored. And it's, of course, it's just a few blocks from my Trader Joe's. So it's on Alabama wow. and Houston. Wow, that'll just be, uh, you might just be so, in your visual loop I there. know. So I'm going to put it in my loop there so that I go see both places when I go there. Wow, that'll be fun. I know. I'm very excited. It's opening next month, so I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, I've never – I mean, I wonder if they have plans for 
expanding. It's interesting in this day of everybody saying, you know, uh, everyone's shopping online and it's hurting retailers, but I am hearing more and more retailers are are opening. And I don't know if it's just to sort of have a flagship store to just be able to, you know, have the presence, the brick and mortar presence or so I'm not sure, you know, economically how it all works out, but I think it's fantastic that you get to go in there. <laughs> I'm very excited. I know because you know it's one of my favorite online stores. So it is. the fact that we're going to have one here, I'm very excited about. Well, plus you'll be able to give us, I mean, you know, you share things from Wisteria that you find, you know, now and again on the podcast, but now you'll really have the the real details because you'll see the stuff in person. I know. So it's going to be good news, bad news. Good news, bad news, Kevin. Sorry. I know, Ben. I know. I know. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll break it to him gently over the weekend over a glass of wine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So we had just one quick question um, for this episode and I thought it was appropriate for this episode. Do you do placemats? when you use a tablecloth and or when you use a runner or don't you use placemats at that period of time? And this is from uh, Jackie P. Oh, well, you know, I think on this kind of reminds me of the old, should you wear white after Labor Day? Oh. It, to me, it's in that category because at one point that was a big fashion no-no. Yes. But now... Things have just kind of, it's do your own thing in so many ways as far as fashion and home decor go. And it's all about kind of rule breaking and and kind of being comfortable in your own skin and in your own home. And so that white thing after Labor Day doesn't seem to hold true anymore. And I think at one point it was a big no-no to use placemats on top of a tablecloth. But it seems like, you know, I see people do it and uh, I think it's something that if you want to do it, you can. Now, and I have to say, I have a, my dining room table is from uh, Restoration Hardware and it has one of those finishes that if you get oil on it, it's going to kind of ruin it. So I kind of have to use a tablecloth on it. So if I had a table, well, actually when we're at the farm at that table, I don't mind just using a table runner and then not using anything else. I think that's fine in that because that table can hold up to it. So part of it is just kind of to whether or not you, how much protection you need to provide for your table. Okay. My thought is with a runner, sure. And I think it gets a little funky when the, the uh, placemats are sort of overlapping the runner and whatnot. But if your table is wide enough, be tough. Yeah, where the runner is onto itself and then then the placements. That makes sense to me because, you know, it's de- it's protecting the table and it's also decorative. Now, for my mind, you know, as I mentioned, I'm not really a tablecloth girl. But even if I was, I don't think I would then put placemats on top of it. This was de- would definitely I be I think the- you did do that at, remember, Texas Flip and Move? Dude, all rules were off. We had to make that look good with what we had. <laughs> So, I mean, we, need, we needed everything we had. I was going to, like, you know, I would have taken my T-shirt off and put it under the plate if it made it look, you know, if we could be trying to make that look better. But Okay. Um, okay. All right. Just had to remind you. Okay. Well, I don't even remember that. I might have blocked it out. But that particular moment. Um but I would not in general do that unless I was in a dusty field in Texas and the time okay. was running out and I, and I had to make the table look good. So in my general course of, okay. of life, I would <laughs> not put uh, a placemat on top of a tablecloth. I would use a charger. Right. That's true. I mean, that's not something I would typically do. But you know what? If you do it and you think it looks great, I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not, never say never. There might be some situation where I saw Clearly it I never it. say never. I did and I didn't even remember doing it. <laughs> Clearly. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and really, isn't it fun to have a friend that follows you around all the place and then tell, reminds you of all the stuff you do that you wish you had done? And then blabs on you? Yes. And I tells know. the whole world. I know you love it. I don't remember that. I'm going to have to look at those pictures. But anyway. We'll see if this part makes it into the podcast or if it gets edited out. We'll just see, won't we? No one will really ever know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. 
Okay, so that is good. Uh, I think we've sort of cleared that up, Jackie. I hope that we have. Um, so yeah, such fun. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We hope that we've um, taken the any stress out of your holiday table and given you some great ideas and gave given you two great resources for getting through the holidays. DianeJamesHome.com as well as the Calm app, calm.com slash DTT. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.